or free grace, there is a danger to that doctrine. Okay? And we know in the Bible, you know, the Bible talks about uh, false faith or cheap faith or counterfeit faith. It's all over the Bible. So, I, I don't believe that, because cheap grace or free grace theology believes that in order to get saved, all you need is to agree. If you say, do you, if you ask a person, do you believe in Jesus? And the person say, yes. But the person lives like the devil and loves the world and loves to sin. It doesn't matter, you can, 20 years you can believe in Jesus. It's only an intellectual faith, right? Well, even Judas, to some degree, believed in Jesus. But he's not 100% enlightened. That's why he was still lost, right? Uh, you know, there are atheists today, uh, Dan Barker, who is an atheist, who debates Christians. He was formerly a minister, an evangelical minister, but now an atheist. He once believed the God, uh, Jesus Christ. There are atheists today who were once Christians, ministers of the gospel. Are they still saved today? See? Because if easy believing or cheap gra or free grace theology is true, then those people are still saved. Right? Because 20 years ago they believed. But they, they, don't, they no longer believe today. Mm -hmm. Amen? Uh, the children who, who were introduced by their parents believed when they were kids, but when they grew up they were gangsters, criminals. Mm -hmm. Right? Because mm -hmm. you know, cheap, uh, free grace, you know, their theology, as long as you believe, works are not needed to get saved, to go to heaven. Works are commitment, obedience, they don't count, as long as you believe. That's dangerous. That's a bad theology, because the Bible doesn't... It's true, I defend salvation by grace alone through faith. I am a defender of that. You cannot add works to that. But I also believe there's counterfeit faith. Right? Because you have to define, okay, what is faith? What is believing? It's not just intellectual as, uh, affirmation or intellectual assent that, okay, I am agreeing with the gospel. I believe Jesus, a lot of people believe that Jesus died for the sins of the world. But they don't go to church. They may even call them, consider themselves, I'm a Christian. I believe Jesus died and rose again. That's it. But that's it. That's all there is. They don't practice obedience, holiness, sanctification. They're not even born again. And if you ask them, they will defend their, their salvation because as long as you believe, That's about theology. Amen? On the other hand, Lordship salvation can also be bad because if you have works, right? If you say you cannot be saved until you do this, do this, do this, until Jesus is your Lord 100% and I can see it in your life. That can also be bad theology because now it's grace plus obedience. That's not what the Bible... So both can be extreme. Lordship salvation, free grace, or cheap grace. Now, I'll tell you, for the next four Sundays, I will tell you what I believe based on the Bible. And the reason why I'm going to do this is because we're going to divide people. We're going to divide the body of Christ. We're going to exclude those who are believing in cheap grace, free grace, Easy believism. They are not saved. Okay? I know I'm going to have a lot of enemies because I'm devoted to the Word of God. 
right? The Catholics might, might hate my message. The, the religious people, the Lutherans. But we're going to study what the Word of God teaches. Amen? It will cause division, of course. Every time Jesus preached, there was a riot. Chaos, division, persecution, right? And so with Paul, wherever he went, there was a riot. Because the, the Judaizers also called themselves, we are children of God too. Right? So the reason why I'm doing this is I want to bring genuine people to heaven like you. You are the disciples of Jesus Christ. And I want to invest myself in the kingdom of God. Amen? Well, Jesus himself warned that the tares will grow with the wheat. They will grow together until the harvest time when the angels will reap. Will reap. Will, dip, will separate the wheat from the tares. Right? And you know what evangelists do. This is who I am. I look for the wheat, the sheep, the elect. That's what evangelists do. I'm not going to pastor again in a building where half our sheep and half our goat and look for everybody, love everybody. I'm called to go out. See, Jesus never was an evangelist. You know why? Because he looked for the sheep. He never spent all his day in the synagogue trying to convince the religious people. In fact, he condemned Chorazin and Bathsheba, Bethsaida because they did not repent. And you know what he went? He left them and went to the next village. Those are the calling of evangelists. We're called to look for the lost sheep. Right? When you're ready, I will be back. That's my guarantee. That's my assurance. When you're ready for the gospel, for true faith, I am here to disciple you. But if you're not ready, God will lead me somewhere else. See the distinction between a pastor and an evangelist? I've always been an evangelist. That's why people don't like me, because I, op I function differently. Mm. Right? But my goal is to bring all the elect to heaven, all the souls God will give you to heaven. And that may end up in the Philippines one day. Right? But don't misunderstand me. I love people. I just don't like when they play religion. When they're not ready for true faith and they've been there 10 years, I feel like I'm wasting my time, to tell you honestly. Because the Spirit of God will warn me. Amen. There are hurting people there that needs to be found. Amen. <clears throat> Plus, I'm doing the body of Christ a favor because I'm helping you examine your faith. Because my ultimate goal here is I don't want false Christians, you know, cheap grace believers, right? Easy believers. To go to hell. They may not like this message. Of course. They will not like this message. That is why there is a debate on YouTube. Because easy believers. Uh, easy believism. They defend what they believe. No, as long as you believe. Just don't talk about works. Right? They consider themselves. Well, you know what will happen? In judgment day, we will all stand before God. Right? God will examine every faith. That's dangerous. You don't want to be standing before God when all you can say is, but I believed in you. That's all. It's all empty confession. Right? You can't just say, I believed in you. Well, it depends what kind of faith. Right? So this is a long series. You know, I'm just introducing why I'm preaching this. And I'm called to preach this. This is the gospel. You know, I spent hours, years studying the theology of the gospel. It's called soteriology. That's all I'm specializing in. Right? I'm like an eye specialist specializing in glaucoma. <laughs> That's all I do to make sure you can see. Amen. Yeah. I'm not a therapist that will massage you and massage there. 
And then they still leave the clinic dead. No, our eyes need to be opened. Do you agree with me? Are you with me? Hindi tayo pwedeng masamasahe lang dito, masamasahe dun. Pat in the back, pat in the back all the time. People like that, pat in the back. You know, if you're blind, you have to know you're blind. Right? I know the Holy Spirit is needed here to convict people. Right? So, I don't want to be offensive, but I'm hoping a little bit of push, a little bit of, you know, sometimes my massage does to me to treat my eczema, a little bit of pressure. That's what I do with Gina. At night when she's in terrible pain, I give her pressure and she, she doesn't like it. <laughs> But it, it helps. It improves. Amen? Otherwise, there will be more problems. She can't go to work, sit eight hours a day. Actually, you better pray for her because the time will come when she has to quit because sciatica doesn't like sitting for long hours. So I'm in a tight spot here to choose between health and work. Money or my wife. <laughs> We're, co go we're arriving at that point as we get older. Mm -hmm. So keeping this, this ministry has a lot of challenges. But God, you know, God will take, God already figured it out. Amen? amen? amen. You know, God is greater than the interest rate. Can you say amen? <laughs> amen. Amen. amen? God is greater than inflation. God is greater than OAS. <laughs> Omnipotent, almighty supplier. A lot of people, they, they wait on their OAS. They always look at their bank. <laughs> when can I go back to the Philippines? I'm going to save all my OAS. No, you look to God. Because OAS will not be there if there's World War III. Yes. It's not going to be there. Not even your pension. Yes. Right? Anyway, let's go to the word now. Look at James. The book of James. I'm going to prove to you, based on the Bible, that there is such thing as dead faith. Okay? James chapter 1, verse 22. James chapter 1, verse 22. You know, I'm sorry I said earlier we're going to divide the body of Christ. Well, I can't do that. Jesus said when he comes, he will divide the sheep from the goats. That's not my job. But sometimes that's how hard I work, you know. But I realize it's not my job. Uh, there's nothing I can do if there's one here who believes in cheap faith. You're, we still love you. But I hope this message will change you. Amen. 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 Because we're, I'm not going to tolerate someone being here and not get impacted by the word of God. Yes. Then I have failed my job. Can you say amen? Amen. 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 Praise God. You're here today. <laughs> amen. James chapter 1. James chapter 1 verse 22. Okay. James said, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. See, be hearers. Sorry, be doers, not hearers only. Be doers of the word, not hearers only. Otherwise, you are deceiving yourself. So, I believe in my opinion, there's such thing as a self-deceiving faith. Self-deceiving faith, you know, they, I can participate in a lot of Bible study. I can s share all the verses I have learned through the years. But if I'm only a hearer, I'm not practicing, I'm not obeying it. Then James said, well, you're deceiving yourself. Uh, there's more, like... If we jump to chapter 2, verse 14, here's the debate now. James, dig, 
dig, is digging in to the truth of saving faith. Verse 14, what does it profit, my brethren, if sometimes, if someone, sorry, if someone says he has faith but does not have the works, can faith save him? If someone says, I have faith, but no works, okay? Is that genuine saving faith? Can that kind of faith save him? Okay? And, you know, look at verse 15. What are the, those works that are necessary, you know? in our Christian faith, right? Well, James is not teaching that the formula for salvation is faith plus works. That's not what he's saying here. Okay, let me be clear on this. That is not what James is arguing. What James is trying to prove here is genuine faith cannot be hidden. Amen? Genuine faith will not deceive you. Because you will see yourself obeying God. Right? Genuine faith, you will ask yourself, why do I go to church? Why do I give? Why do I resist temptation? Right? Then now you know the answer. Right? Because God is in your heart. Jesus is working in your heart. The Holy Spirit. Amen? But if there's no work at all, then, then that's dead faith, right? Okay, if a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says to them, depart in peace, be warned, be filled, but you do not give them the things which are needed for the body, what does it profit? Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. See, faith by itself, if there is no works, good works, obedience that follows, it's dead faith. So what is dead faith? We have to define that. What is saving faith? What is dead faith? There is such thing as dead faith. I believe it's a self-deceiving faith. You know, you can't just say, well, you know, there's a lot of poor people in the Philippines. But we can't even send a, a pair of socks. It's as simple as that. Where is your faith? Right? Amen. By the way, we have one box ready to go, so... You're going to add a few groceries. Sunday may be the last Sunday because it's been sitting for a while now. It has to go. It's right there. You see a few groceries, canned goods on, on top of it. it. Maybe there's 10% more room. Okay. So, yeah, because, you know, I've thought about this too, you know. Uh, we have poor pastors. I mean, I'm not going to say poor. They are blessed. Amen? But they have challenges. They have challenges. Financial challenges. Well, yeah, I've always think, been thinking about this. What will happen to them one day, right? Uh, we're all getting older. Right? Uh, we're all reti retiring. Our income are getting smaller. Uh, and we've worked with them 20 years at least. Well, that's God laid that in my heart and God will make a way. Yeah. Amen? Yeah, we want to be a blessing to them. Amen? Uh, it's been a matter of life and death for them. Uh, you know, that whatever small amount we send helps them keep their facility. Because it's a house church. Right? Residence and house at the same time. Uh, and you know the miracle in, in Asingan, God gave them a free building. Amen? Praise God. 
So, yeah, if there's no works, faith by itself without good works is dead. Amen. Well, verse 19, you believe that there is God. You believe that there is one God. You do well, but even demons believe and tremble. See, there is such thing as demonic faith. Even demons believe in Jesus. You know, when, when Jesus came to heal, deliver a sick person, I think it's the demon possessed living in a cemetery. You know what the demon said? Son of God, did you come here early to torment us? <laughs> they know who Jesus is. <laughs> they believe he's the son of God. But will they be saved? It's a demonic faith. We, we see a lot of people with demonic faith. People also pa yung kapa. I believe. Kayo lang bang masasay? I also believe. Well, you know, look at this. Will demons be saved? No. Amen. Verse 20, do you not, do you want to know Verse 20, but do you want to know, O foolish man, that faith without works is dead? See, James calls them foolish, foolish man. Do you not know that faith without works is dead? Now again, James is not saying to get saved, you need to believe plus works. James, what James is saying is genuine faith will change you, will impact your life. Genuine faith will transform you. Amen? That's why Jesus said, you must be born again. You've heard me preach about regeneration a lot of times, right? John 3.3, 3, Jesus said, you cannot enter the kingdom of God unless you are born again. What is born again? New creation. If anyone is in Christ Jesus, he is a new creation. How can an old creation enter the kingdom of God? How can a person born with Adamic nature, still in Adam, enter the kingdom of God? You need to be born again in Christ. So you can have the new nature. The righteousness of God. Remember I've been talking about the righteousness of God that, that comes by faith. You receive it by faith. It's the gift of righteousness. His righteousness imputed to us. That's another topic. There's so many theologies. I don't want to confuse you. We'll do it one at a time. Amen? Praise God. Yeah, it's dead faith. So look at another example. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son on the altar? Do you not see that faith was working together with his works and by works faith was made perfect? See, James uses Abraham as an example. Did you, do you not know what he did? He offered his own son, son at the altar. Why did he do that? Because he believed God. Right? Because God told him, offer your own son. And because of his faith, his strong faith in God, he obeyed. Amen. Amen. Now, do we have saving faith? That's the question. That's a million dollar question. If you have saving faith, not just intellectual faith, you will obey. <clears throat> Amen? Just like Abraham. Now James is not saying Abraham was saved by his works. James is saying, you see how his faith operated? It's producing works. His faith was working together with works. Amen? 
You know, a saved person, if God speaks to him, give me that. He might struggle, but the time will come, he will give it to the Lord, whatever it is. Yes. Amen? Because that person is alive, not dead. That person has, that person's faith is alive, not dead faith. Amen. So that's what I believe. Okay, the danger of easy believism or free grace is this theology is bad. All they say, oh, but Jesus died for the sins of the world, therefore all of us are saved. As long as you believe, that's it. Believe. Well, a lot of people believe in multivitamins. But not everyone is taking it. Yeah. We believe, well, we need to eat this, we need to eat that. But I don't want to buy that because it's expensive. <laughs> I don't want to buy that. It's one dollar each. <laughs> that, that avocado is one dollar each. <laughs> they believe it's good. But they don't want to buy it. Because they just bought their ticket. <laughs> oh, hindi ba totoo? <laughs> <laughs> well, help, take care of your health. Amen. Amen. If you really believe in health is wealth, then health is priority. Yeah. Right? If you really believe in Jesus, then you, you will follow him, right? Yes. See, there's a difference. Here's a difference. I, I searched uh, Matt Slick's website last night. He differentiate Matt Slick is a famous apologist, right? Uh, he differentiates between uh, intellectual faith and trusting faith. He said there's two kinds of faith. One is intellectual, one is trusting faith. What saves is trusting faith. Amen? When you trust Jesus. When you put your trust in Him, obedience will follow. Amen. Because this is the kind of faith that saves you, where God deposits, where God regenerates you, makes you, it was, you know, uh, it includes regenerate. This is the kind of faith that includes your regeneration, become born again. And, you know, this is the kind of faith where God deposits his Holy Spirit. And when God deposits the Holy Spirit, you will never be the same person. Amen. Believe me. But a person who does not have the Holy Spirit, who does not, who is not born again, can pretend to be a Christian. You know, they're trying, they want to save their appearance, not their heart. Beware of those people. There's 40% of them in the traditional churches. Well, I'm no longer there, so I can I can speak like this, right? Can you say amen? I'm not saying this to condemn, but I really hope they will get saved. How will we do it? Well, prayer and keep preaching the gospel, the true gospel. I hope some of them will hear it and they will get alarmed, right? Because the Holy Spirit can use it to convict, right? I really believe that. You know my motive, I'm not condemning people, right? Yeah, but how can we correct that? But, well, Jesus said they will grow together. There's nothing we can do. But we're, we hope we can save some more. See, some people, Matt Slick said, well, in, a, in, a, in a document I've read on, on, online, uh, I think it's from R.C. Sproul, or, or I forgot, but some, he said some people are trying to save their appearance instead of their sin, their heart. So they want to put on a religious show that they are, they love God, just like the Pharisees. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why Jesus said to Nicodemus, you must be born again. 
if you want to enter the kingdom of God. Amen? Because what you're doing is not enough. Right? You need to love Jesus with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. You need to trust Him. Not just say, oh, I believe. That's free, easy believing. Easy believing. Cheap faith. Cheap Christianity. I don't think Jesus died so we can have cheap faith. Do you think Jesus died so we can have cheap faith? I don't think so. Jesus died to set us free from the power of sin. We're no longer slaves of sin. Remember Romans 5? When he rose again from the dead so we can have newness of life. He died and rose again so we can have newness of life. That's what I believe. Faith that works. And if faith doesn't work, it's a serious sign. Do some cross-examination because that faith will send you to hell. It will send you to hell. That's a strong warning. Let's go to verse Matthew 7. So let me show you examples of easy believing or false faith. Matthew 7 or we can also call this dead faith or self-deceiving faith or religious faith. They're all the same. Okay, Matthew 7, verse 21 to 23. Matthew 7, on Judgment Day, let's see what will happen. I've already quoted this many times. Matthew 7, 21 to 23. Jesus said, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. How many people call Jesus Lord, Lord? Many people will say, yes, he is my Lord. He is my Savior. Okay. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, judgment day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice wickedness, lawlessness. See, Jesus will say to them, I never knew you. Depart from me. Depart from me. I never knew you, you who practice wickedness. They're practicing wickedness. They're still in Adam. They're still a slave of sin. Even though they call Jesus Lord, Lord, and they will brag, did we not get involved in the church ministry? We fed the poor. Amen. Uh, you know, we prophesied in your name and done many wonders in your name. Maybe they have done some missions. They have done many wonders. Maybe they got involved in crusades, healing crusades. Uh, but uh, this is really dangerous, you know. Easy believism or, or free grace theology can make you believe that as long as you agree, intellectual faith, as long as you're not contradict, opposing the gospel, you're saved. It doesn't, and then they will defend because works are not needed. It's true. This is tricky, very tricky because it's true. From the moment you got saved until you die, works doesn't count. In your salvation, it's by grace, it's a gift. But the danger is, if there are no works, no life transformation. If you've been living in the world like the devil all your life. Then back to our definitions. What, what is the definition of saving faith? What is true faith? What is dead faith? See, it's tricky, right? They can convince you. They can come to you. As long as architects, you, you, you confess Jesus is Lord. You're good. 
Well, that's true. I agree with that. Then they will say, works are irrelevant. True. Works are not needed to go to heaven. Even in my deathbed, it's the grace of God that will save. But I will what I will warn you is, are you sure you have true faith? What if it's dead faith? See? Mm -hmm. That's my job now. I'm like a house inspector, right? Bring me, I'm going to buy a house. It looks good. On the outside, it looks good. Why do you bring the expert? Why? Let's look at the foundation. It's built on quicksand. Don't buy it. That's my job. Some people, they just like to buy a house built on quicksand, and so they're going to bring in a fake expert, you know. Just tell me it's a good house, otherwise I won't pay you. <laughs> and then they'll buy it. Because they're committed to it. See the importance of apologetics? This is apologetics. I've been in numerous debates online, that's what I do sometimes. Just posting comments, people attacking me, humiliating me because they disagree. But you know, we shall all stand on Judgment Day. Jesus said, I never knew you. Yeah, you called me Lord, Lord. Yeah, you went to the altar, said the sinner's prayer. The sinner's prayer doesn't save. It doesn't save. In fact, remember I made an announcement? 2020, during COVID, I was calling all the people I led at the altar. And I said, forget about that. That doesn't save. Come back again, we'll do it again, because that doesn't save. In fact, there's one guy who never goes to church. And when I followed him up, I said, this is my question. Bro, do you think you're, a, you're already saved, that you're a Christian? You know what he said? Remember the kitchen? You prayed for me in the kitchen. I accepted the Lord. I believe. We said the sinner. Is that, is that what you're going to say? to? Here's my question. When you stand before God, is that what you're going to say to God? The pastor prayed at the kitchen at the altar. What did you do for 10 years? He, went, he didn't go to church. He only goes there when his wife is there. He never gave tithes. Well, I'm not judging him, but I hope he will make it. That's my hope. I hope he will make it to heaven. But if not, this is my job. That is why I'm explaining it. Yeah. Can you say amen? amen? Because I want you to be sure. Yeah. I want you to be sure. You know, when I bought my engagement ring to Gina, a one third carat diamond after we were married because I was so poor in Bible college I couldn't buy a wedding ring so when I was working first year in the ministry I had a small salary so I was able to buy a one third carat cheap back then $650 maybe it's tripled now maybe it's three thousand dollars now back in 93 and uh, I look at the diamond like this in my eyes <laughs> <laughs> and then they gave me the, the magnifying glass. <laughs> so that you can see. Yeah. Because the guy, the owner is saying that is class SI. The highest class of diamond. You won't see any visible defects with your naked eye, even with the magnifying glass. That's why it's a little bit pricey. And I kept looking, and then, you know, I asked the owner, are you sure? What if it's not? You know, he got angry at me. <laughs> it's a story in Richmond. He, he got, really got insulted. Yeah. Because the way I thought, I was like, you know, accusing him of being a scam, a scammer, a liar. He really got mad at me. I mean, you're in reach, you're in my store. What do you think it is? Can't you see? <laughs> then I looked again. <laughs> do you have the certification? 
<laughs> yeah, he gave me a certification. I can sue him. That's how I preach the gospel. Okay? I want to make sure you have certification. You are certified genuine faith. Can you say amen? Now, you know my, my ministry now as an evangelist, I will only lead certified believers. Because that's what God called me to do. Go find the elect. Go find them. Amen? Find them. Wherever they are, find them. Amen? It's a different calling. It's a different ministry now. We, we all understand where we are now, right? Amen. 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 This is first class evangelism. Amen. 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 To the glory of God. Amen. I've learned 30 years. I've learned all my mistakes. Right? So you got to do it differently this time. So anyway, yeah, I don't want you to be saying, Lord, Lord, ako nagpagawa ng building eh. Sino pala sa'yo? Sino sa batas Lord, Lord, hindi ba nag-fellowship pa kami sa backyard every Sunday? Ang taong Pilipina, I went to the Philippines six times. I don't want to hear Jesus say, I never knew you. Oh, amen, amen. amen. But if I'm doing that, okay, if I went to the Philippines and my last trip we spent our own money, if in 20, 30 years we've been giving to the Lord financially, if, if, if we left our careers in, ninth, you know, in, in, 89, I went to the Bible school and I went to Bible school and then pastored in 93. And why would I do that? See, when I'm examining myself, why would I can still have five girlfriends today, you know? <laughs> if time. I want to. Habang functional pa tayo. Hindi pa tayo inutin. At the same time, huh? Yeah. Why I still have the looks, you know? <laughs> but, but why resist temptation, right? You gotta ask yourself, why do you do that? Why? I have no explanation. Except that's the work of God. Because I couldn't even do it on my own. But but this is what God has done. Why don't you just retire? Right? Why do you have to be a missionary evangelist for until you drop? Just like Brother Batki. Why, why don't you just stop preaching online? Because this is what God is doing now. So see, there's evidence. So yeah, when, when I stand there, I hope that everything we've done is because of faith. We did not get saved because of those words, but because of faith. You know, just like Abraham, remember James said, why did he offer his son? That's a big demand, you know, that's a, a very uh, difficult call. Will you sacrifice your own son? That's tough. So that's how God tests us, you know. Every time God tests us, you know, nine will fail the test. Nine out of ten people, nine will fail the test. Only those with saving faith will obey the work. There's the consumer Christian too, the consumer faith, the prosperity faith. You know, by the way, Matt Slick said, other than trusting, saving faith. And intellectual faith, there's also the, the material faith. When the motive is, God will give me Cadillac. God will give me mansion. I'm a Christian because I need protection. I don't want to die of illness. 
That's all. Bumili ka na lang ng insurance kay Mama Sita. <laughs> Kung kailangan mo lang ng protection, come! Ano number niyo, ate? You want health insurance? Critical insurance? You don't need to go to Jesus. I'm not insulting, but hey, mahiya naman tayo. I mean, I'm not going to do that to Jesus. He died for me. And then all I want is blessing. I want money, Lord. That's all there is why I'm following you. Well, prosperity, faith. Prosper prosperity, doctrine. See, it's also a false faith. You just want money, healing, protection. No, I've seen people like that. Pray for people like that at the altar. I never saw them again. <laughs> I worked like a lawyer in 30 years. I defended my members. I fought their employers. I argued with their employers. But I can't bring them to heaven. I can't give them saving faith. It's up to them. To believe in Jesus. To surrender their life to Jesus. Amen. If they don't want to do it. I've done my job. Amen. Yeah, I argued with an employer. He was taking a picture of me. <laughs> and I said. Well I'm on public property. I'm not in your doorstep. I'm in the back lane. We were arguing. Because I picked up a nanny being abused. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's part of our service <laughs> to the glory of God. <laughs> we were driving on Fraser Highway, and I remember I took you to the emergency, remember? <laughs> on, on Fraser Highway, <laughs> Langley. <laughs> she was a young woman, full of energy, playing volleyball, and she broke her knee or something <laughs> and we went to emergency we were on a picnic and I spent three hours and I said I missed the barbecue <laughs> we're having fun we're here in the emergency you know <laughs> yeah that's part of the job <laughs> well, I was driving yesterday and I still remember that hospital <laughs> we took tests there <laughs> then she had x-rays she, she can go back to work happy but all week I was thinking of the barbecue. You know? <laughs> I miss the barbecue. <laughs> anyway, pra praise God. So first, first John. Do we still have time? First John chapter two, verse nineteen. Let's read more heavy duty scripture. First John chapter two. First John chapter two. There's really a lot of verses in the Bible to prove our case. We can go to court for this. This is lawyer's research. We can go to court and defend this. Amen? We can argue all day before the judge trying to kill this bad doctrine, free grace theology. Right? Look at 1 John. 1 John chapter 2. Verse 19. John said, they went out from among us, but they were not of us. If they had been of us, they would have continued with us, but they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. You know, this is very offensive. You want to you want me to give an explanation why a lot of people disappear in church? This is it. Because John said they were not of us. See, before, at some point, they were walking with the disciples, but they left. They disappeared. Why? Well, John said they went out from, um, from us, because they were not of us. 
If they were re really saved, if they're really part of the body of Christ, they're really part of our, our fellowship, they're really part of the body of Christ, they would remain. But the reason why they went is so that they might be revealed. Their true identities, their true nature might be revealed and exposed, right? That they were really none of us. None of them were of us. In other words, none of them really belonged to the kingdom, to the body of Christ. That's tough. And if, if free grace theology is true, if easy believing is true, if all you need to do is, do you believe this? <clears throat> yes, I'll even sign it. But, but then after that, no life transformation, no works. Then why did John say they were not of us? They're not saved. See, weren't these people who, be, in the beginning, claimed to be believers? They, fo they were following, walking with the disciples. They identified themselves as followers of Christ. They were fellowshipping. But at some point, they fell away. They disappeared. Why? It's because there's no foundation, no salvation, no genuine faith. Right? Just like the parable of Jesus, when the storms came, the house collapsed. Because it, the house was built on quicksand, on a false foundation. See, when the persecutions came, trials and tribulation, they just wandered. They disappeared. They vanished. They perished. See, because to begin with, they were not really saved. John was saying they were none of us right from the very beginning. They were none of us. They didn't belong to the kingdom right from the very start. That's why they disappeared. So this is a category of people who proclaim faith. Easy believing, just like Dan Barker. Now an atheist debating, debating with Christians, denying God, denying Jesus. There is no God. He is mocking Jesus, humiliating Jesus. Search him on YouTube. He's there. Dan Bart used to be an evangelical pastor, minister. See, I suspect that in the beginning, he was just a religious figure. Not really saved. I saw in a, on YouTube a video of a lay Christian, just a lay, lay Christian, an ordinary Christian like you who knows the word. And he was arguing with an LBGT minister. The guy was even wearing a black robe with the white cloth here. Remember the white collar here and the black robe? And they were talking about the Bible until the topic, you know, the, you know, the, the lay person asked serious questions about homosexuality and sexual purity and fornication. And that's when they differ. That's when they disagree. And this guy is a evangelical minister. Liberal theology minister. It's called liberal theology. They don't believe that the Bible is the word of God. Right? They don't take the authority of the Bible. So, yeah, they, you can... Call yourself a pastor, a preacher, an LBGT minister, whatever, and not be saved. See, we know what John said. There, they were none of us. They were not really, from the very beginning, they were not really saved. That's why they left. They separated from the mother church and started their own kingdom, just like Kibuloi. Kibuloi was a byproduct of UPC, United Pentecostal Church, right? Until he created his own kingdom. Because from the very beginning, I really believe Kibuloi was never saved. He is a deceived, false teacher. Okay? So that's what First John 
teaches. There are those who confess faith, but they were ne never really saved from the very beginning. 1 John 2, 19. So, it's true. That destroys free grace. Not everyone who says, Lord, Lord. Remember Matthew 7? People call him, Lord, Lord, we believe you. Jesus said, I don't know you. Okay? So free grace is destroyed. Amen? Intellectual faith, easy believing is dangerous. Amen? Two more verses and we're close. First John, again, 1 verse 6. Okay, here's the warning. If we say we have fellowship with Christ and walk in darkness, we lie. We're lying. And, the tr and we lie and do not practice the truth, 1 John 1, 6. We lie and not practice the truth. Hearers only. Remember James said, hearers only deceiving yourself. And then chapter 2, verse 4. He who says, I know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar. And the truth is not in him. Jesus, the truth is not in him. So be careful when you say, I know him. Be careful when you say, I have fellowship with Freedom Fire Mission Society. Be careful when you say, I go to Relate Church or whatever church you attend. When you say, I know him. Because if you are not practicing the truth, you're lying. If you are not keeping the commandments, you are lying. The truth is not in you. Well, you know... That doesn't mean you need to be perfect like Jesus to get saved. That's not what it means. No, no one will get perfect until we're in heaven. Mm -hmm. But at least when you say, I'm a Christian, I am, I am a believer, at least there are some basic evidences. If you say, I'm a Christian, but I, I don't believe in church, that's a big red flag. I don't go to church, that's a big red flag. Mm -hmm. Right? Because you're Jesus said the Bible commands fellowship, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do not neglect the assembly of the saints together, the book of Hebrews. If you say, I'm a Christian, but I don't believe in giving. Well, that can be questionable because a Abraham gave his own son. Mm -hmm. If you won't give your ten dollars, you won't give your son. You won't go to the mission field, you won't sacrifice. That's it. So be careful. Of saying, I know him, I'm a Christian, because there is such thing as cheap, easy believism that will deceive you. And then on Judgment Day, do not be shocked if Jesus say to you, depart from me. You who are workers of disobedience. I never <clears throat> knew you. You are not my son. That's it. You are not part of the family. Like John, they were not of us. The reason, kaya sila naglaho, huwag na tayong magtaka. That's what John is saying. Huwag na tayong magtaka kung nawawala sila because they were not of us. See? But these are tough. These are tough words. But you know, I want you to leave this day happy and rejoicing. Thank God. Yes. I believe in Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I'm not perfect, but I, I want to be pleasing to you. I want to do my best to please you, even though I'm not perfect. Amen? I want to obey. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for our message today. It is true. I believe there are still a few saved people out there. Maybe the reason why they're, they're not able to come or maybe they're, they're just facing some challenges in life, some trials and tribulation. They're still saved. I believe that. They just need to do a little bit of overcoming. Amen? Overcoming the challenges. Because you know, Christianity, there's a lot of roadblocks. Right? Just to keep our... Ministry alive, there are roadblocks. 
Like her sciatica is one of her, the rules. If she can't go to work anymore and say it's game over, it can be game over. But you know, when I pray to God, we will overcome the roadblocks. Amen? We will sacrifice. Amen? We don't have to be perfect, but at least we're fighting. Now, some people are saved. It's just they're not fighting good enough. That I want to challenge them. It's not game over yet. Keep fighting. Keep finishing your race. Because you're saved. Just keep running again. Well, those are, are, are pe those people we consider still part of us. But the danger in the message, there are those who will not do anything to fight. Because in the first place, they were not of us. Don't expect anything good to come. They're not part of us. But that's dangerous. Because Judgment Day will reveal it, what kind of faith we have. So, Lord, we heard the message. We want to respond positively.